Integrate is the second theme of this conference. Marquette University is a leader in integrating entrepreneurial mindset into its engineering programs and culture. Here with a short keen talk to explain, please welcome Marquette University's Dean of the Opus College of Engineering and Professor of Biomedical Engineering, Dr. Chris Rapella. Leadership needs a hard shift. And much of what we need to know about good leadership, we find in the movie, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Willy Wonka, played by Gene Wilder, is seeking a successor to lead his chocolate factory. So he hides five golden tickets in chocolate bars and distributes them around the world. And the lucky winners who find those golden tickets are invited to the factory for a field trip. During the factory tour, we witness an amazingly creative and technologically advanced factory. The chocolate factory with its chocolate river, golden eggs, edible teacups, Wonka vision, just screams innovation and imagination. As the story unfolds, factory challenges expose behaviors of the visitors and Mr. Wonka that reflect behaviors we often see in companies today. One day, our engineering students will go on to be leaders of companies and organizations. And they will be asked to systematically analyze and solve problems. While we prepare them for technical competency, do we do enough to prepare them for hard leadership? As we know, leadership can be very difficult when people don't trust, when people are selfish and greedy, and when people think they have all the answers and don't listen. Leadership is about unleashing human potential through relationships. And unleashing the power of innovative teams requires leaders who share ownership of ideas, who invite diverse opinions, and who create a culture in which people are safe to experiment and fail. Traditional engineering curricula do not prepare engineers for the soft skills of developing others. Yet, there is nothing soft about these relational skills. While not a Harvard business case study, allow me to stretch this film analogy a bit to suggest that an innovative culture requires leaders who are self-aware and vulnerable. Mr. Wonka created such a culture at his factory and his adventures remind us that people who lack a self-awareness often fail. I think that leadership needs a hard shift towards self-awareness. And our ability to unleash the potential in others resides in our ability to recognize our own relational skills. Let me share a true story about a faculty I'll call David. David had achieved many of the research and teaching milestones expected for promotion to full professor. While preparing the promotion dossier, David's department chair received numerous letters from students complaining about the leadership in David's laboratory and classroom. Students commented that David lacked empathy and communication, and he was often demeaning and defensive in his relationship with students. When questioned about these behaviors, David was surprised, and he was clearly unaware of his negative impact on student success. The department chair and dean asked David if he would consider working with an executive coach. David agreed and found a coach that he trusted. And I'm happy to say that within a year of coaching, David's relationship with his students greatly improved and so did the productivity of his lab. Daniel Goleman, a leading expert on emotional intelligence, defines emotion intelligence as our ability to recognize understand and manage our emotions and those of others. And Goldman's research shows that leaders who have high emotional intelligence achieve greater financial results, achieve greater productivity, and establish more effective and supportive organizational cultures. Managing relationships and building networks starts with self-awareness. Let's return to the factory. Throughout the factory tour, we witness Mr. Wonka's reflective mindset. Often expressed through his witty commentary, 
on the selfish and bad behavior of his visitors. It is clear that Mr. Wonka is looking for a leader with self-awareness. In your role as leaders, do you willingly listen to and accept feedback? Do you allow a diverse group of people into your feedback network? Could you? I think leadership needs a hard shift towards self-awareness. I think leadership also needs a hard shift toward vulnerability because when we are open and honest with others, we create trust on a team. But we all know that vulnerability is hard and requires courage. Let me share another story about a student I'll call Robert. Robert came to my office a few weeks before the final exam. He was a good student and had above average performance. And while I was explaining some concepts to Robert, he began to tear up. He became very nervous and started apologizing for his tears. I calmly grabbed for some Kleenex and I looked at Robert and I said, do not apologize for your tears. Your tears tell me you were raised with a really good heart. And when my own two sons occasionally tear up, I figure I've done a pretty good job as a mother. I wanted Robert to know that I'd always see his talents and potential first. Oftentimes, when we step outside our comfort zones, we expose our vulnerabilities and letting go of perfection requires vulnerability. Patrick Lencioni, a business culture researcher and author, likes to explore vulnerability in the workplace by asking the following, what is something you want others to know about you? And what is something you don't want anyone to know about you? And when he asks these questions, powerful things happen. First, people courageously tell stories about their true selves, inviting others to do the same. And second, other team members are empowered to be honest and authentic. Vulnerability allows people to connect and grow so that all may do their best and most creative work. When we remove fear, people will ask for help. At the end of the Chocolate Factory Tour, only one ticket winner remains, a young boy named Charlie. And Mr. Wonka puts Charlie to the final test. He tries to scare Charlie away through rage and conflict. But young Charlie bravely and humbly walks up to Mr. Wonka and opens his hand and exposes a piece of candy known as a gobstopper that he had received earlier on the tour and he gently places the gobstopper on Mr. Wonka's desk. And as he quietly turns to walk away, Mr. Wonka looks up with a big smile and in a very warm voice says, you did it, you won. And he goes on to tell Charlie that he passed the test and he really wants Charlie to be the next leader of his company. And Mr. Wonka specifically notes Charlie's honesty and vulnerability. In your role, do you encourage students to have the courage to be self-aware and vulnerable? Do you make room for emotions and for managing relational conflict? Could you? Our challenge with engineering education is to integrate the analytical skills with the relational skills so that our students are more holistically prepared for leadership. Across industry and academia, Leadership needs a hard shift towards self-awareness and vulnerability. Our young people today and an increasingly diverse workforce demand it. Faculty like David need to develop their relational skills so that students like Robert can stretch and grow. At Marquette University, we created a program called eLead. eLead is a three-year curricular leadership program that began with engineers and has expanded across disciplines. E-Lead focuses on leading oneself, leading with others, and leading innovation. And I would be happy to hear from you if you'd like more information about this program. As engineers go on to be leaders of companies and organizations, guided by an entrepreneurial mindset, it is important that they recognize that leading innovation and technology starts with people. Are you developing the relational skills in your engineering students.
if you are, there's a golden ticket waiting for you.